And you know, moving again uh, to the press we used to we we've had for a while. So uh, Abdelaziz Sattaf at the Yemen Times in in the, in the early nineties uh, was unfortunately killed in mysterious circumstances in the mid nineties. Um, but his newspaper carries on. It's uh, the most widely read English language newspaper in Yemen, uh, currently edited by his daughter Nadia Sattaf, who is an example of a, uh, a Yemeni woman who, to bring out the cliches, has broken down barriers. Um, and that you know, in 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 a country in a country like Yemen, I I worked briefly with them in 2011, and I saw the difficulties they faced in 2011, trying to present themselves as a neutral voice, as a, a professional voice, and how uh, they lost uh, and were struggling to stay afloat because of that. And yet they've managed to stay afloat. They've managed to stay on, and they still uh, are printing twice weekly, and uh, have a very good website um, with a lot of interesting stories in Yemen, uh, on Yemen, um, and. At AM, which I did mention before, um, this newspaper was set up uh, when the British were still in Aden uh, in 1958. Um, continued uh, for decades with one of the most widely read uh, newspapers uh, in the country, um, and unfortunately ceased publishing in 2009 uh, under pressure from uh, the former the, the former president, and it was basically because they'd. Uh, uh, they, they talked about a, a southern separatist demonstration, or, or because a lot of their coverage was pro uh, pro the secessionists, and so they were shut up um, and shut down. Uh, thankfully, they, they were um, reopened. They they start publishing again uh, on World Press Day last year, and now they're again one of the the, the premier voices uh, in the Yemeni media scene. Um, let's talk about TV and and the past with with regards to that in Yemen. Uh, TV started in 1964 in, in Aden, um, and only in 1975 in Sanaa, so it's not that long ago at all that the TV uh, starts, so you can kind of reflect that now we have all these private channels, we didn't have a TV uh, channel in Yemen until, uh, or North Yemen until 1975. Radio uh, as well, radio started in Aden at the start of the 20th century, yet in Sanaa, uh, didn't start until 1964 and was only on for 15 minutes a day. Um, and yeah, so again, a massive change to, to, to what you see today. Uh, print, like I've said, uh, has existed for a while. That started um, a long time ago. That started in the north in the Ottoman period and in the south uh, with the British. So I've seen very old newspapers in Yemen and the old Ottoman uh, newspapers and the, 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 the sheets, the new sheets, um, that you know, are, are an example of the, the long standing um, media scene in the country. Um, to reflect on something that I have mentioned, uh, which is the, the link or the comparison between Yemen and <coughs> other Arab countries, so especially the, the regional neighbours, I feel, um, and I, maybe other people can disagree, but I feel that Yemen's a lot more open in general than, than uh, GCC countries, and the media scene is a lot more, a lot more open. Um, and for me, that's a, a reflection, um, not just of the post-2011 uh, era because as I've, as I've demonstrated, this has existed before 2011. Um, it's a demonstration of one, I guess, the, there's, a, there's a, I mean, one of the reasons why Yemen or North Yemen was never a police state in the same way that, say, Syria or, or Libya were, was that the, the tribal element in the country meant that the, the president, as much as he liked, couldn't centralize power, couldn't do what he liked, um, apart from, or, or unless he, he you know, uh, paid off certain people and kind of had to keep everyone happy. So there's always been this element of people being able to speak out. Um, and it comes from, I guess, uh, if you've ever been in a, a, a Yemeni, uh, a Yemeni diwan, uh, a Yemeni, I guess, a, a living room, uh, where everyone will gather around in the afternoon and everything will be discussed. And they'll discuss uh, their different viewpoints on different issues and the, 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 the conflicts of the day and their ideas. And, and that now is moving into the 21st century with what I see with, with social media, um, which I'm going to put into private media because uh, why not? Um, so um, there's now a rise of citizen journalism, as we've seen elsewhere in the world. Um, individuals are going online. Uh, this, especially we've seen in 2011, had been seen since, especially with regards to the South. Um, so the South uh, hasn't been covered as well by the enemy media. There's been a lot more oppression towards journalists. Um, in the south than, uh, than in the north. And 
in individuals have therefore gone online, gone onto Facebook, gone onto to Twitter, and um, you know they're 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 telling the world or telling other Yemenis about what's going on. Things are spread via WhatsApp, and um, I mean that's a, a double-edged sword, to be honest. Or all of this is a double-edged sword because um, well, I was, I was watching uh, that Omar Hassan guys one of his clips the other day, and what he said was. WhatsApp is the, the, the main the main news source for mom and dad, um, and that's what it is. And you, know, you sit there and, and it's everything is just spread by WhatsApp. Everyone believes uh, if it's on WhatsApp and you agree with it, that's it. You believe it and it's true. Um, and you know that is a problem. Um, but at the same time, it's it's opened it's opened barriers that, that existed before and uh, allowed uh, younger people, especially, to to have a voice. Um, so uh, yeah, so just quickly talk, I guess, uh, about, oh quickly, sorry, about the use of, again, online, the use of videos. Um, so you have youth collectives, uh, Support Yemen, if you've ever seen Support Yemen's work. Uh, they're a bunch of filmmakers, some of them are journalists, and they, they're they making these amazing videos online, these really high quality videos, um, and, and reaching audiences in the West, uh, but also in Yemen itself, all their videos come in Arabic and English, um, and they're bypassing all the traditional the traditional media media outlets, and I'm going straight straight to YouTube and and getting loads of hits. Also, Him and Chabad, another another organisation that does the same thing. They they tend to make like music videos and uh, and that kind of thing. And 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 Happy Yemen as well, which is another music video. And yeah, the speaker may or may not have been part of that. Um, <laughs> There are, yeah, educated, educated uh, youth movements attempting uh, to portray the country to the outer world. Um, now, again, this is another double-edged sword because what we're seeing right now is, um, like in Iraq and like in Syria, groups like ISIS um, and affiliate, well, groups like Al-Qaeda uh, in Yemen and now there's various splits within Al-Qaeda in Yemen. Um, and they're also making these videos that are kind of borrowing from elements that they've seen in, in Syria and Iraq. So one of the videos the other day um, that was uh, shared a lot um, was one of uh, 14 Yemeni soldiers getting, you know, taken off a bus and, uh, and executed in Hadamas. And it was just pure propaganda, you know, that they showed clips of, of the Bilaid, the leader of, of this group, um, on, on the coach explaining to the other Yemenis on the, on the coach why they'd done this. And, and it was all very well made, and they've got other videos where they have GoPro cameras on, and they're doing it. It looks like a game. It looks like um, like a computer game. Um, so you know, again, it's one of those one of those elements that both sides or all sides are taking advantage of, and and uh, has positives and negatives. Um, to round up on on the issue of private, private media, um, I feel uh, that the genie's uh, been let out of the bottle uh, in Yemen, um, and I don't think there's. Again, as cliche as it sounds, I don't think there's any going back to this era of, of, of silence and, and and not being allowed to criticise and, and and like I said, that you know to a degree didn't exist in, in, in Yemen, but um, I, I, even to the to, to the way it was on the side, I don't think um, that things will return return uh, to that. And I'll, I'll take a quote from uh, from or tweet from uh, Munal Safwan, who is uh, a Yemeni journalist who works with Al uh, in. in Lebanon, and uh, she's uh, been quite anti anti Houthi. She's anti Islam. She's anti Houthi, um, and she she said that um, uh, when Islam emerged in the 1990s uh, with their wars and their oppression, um, people's uh, you know understanding of, of uh, and ability to to, to talk in the what's the translation for why their yeah, the consciousness. Yeah, yeah. Their consciousness didn't, uh, you know, wasn't to the level it is it is today, and their understanding of, of, of politics wasn't wasn't what it is today. And therefore, um, with regards to the Houthi, she feels that you know they won't be able to do what what Islam did in the nineteen nineties and, and get away with it um, to the same the same degree. Um, as uh, as I mentioned before, I do I did work for MBI. Um, and the media, the media institute in Sanaa, and there, the reason why MBI Media Institute was set up in Sanaa was for a lot of the reasons I've mentioned in in this talk. Uh, the lack of professionalism, the lack of 
um, skills that, that exist in, in, in Yemen. And what the centre does is, and it started with this, um, is to have free courses um, where students, journalists, um, even if you have a passing interest in the media, you can register for these courses. Um, and for, in terms of what's available in, in Yemen, it's, it's, it's really good because there's a lot of students, media students in Yemen, who go to some of the top universities, the University of Sana'a, or some of the private universities, and yet they're not receiving any uh, the, uh, uh, practical training. So these guys are qualifying as journalists, and yet they, they haven't learned how to use uh, a camera, they haven't even, you know, uh, they're, they're just learning all the theory, they're, they're not learning anything else. And what we, we, you know, what we were hoping to do in the organisation, what we are doing, is to provide them with the opportunity. Um, so there's small classes, there's none of this kind of, you know, uh, 30 or 40 guys on one camera, there's small classes where uh, people are learning about news writing, um, broadcast media, radio training, and they're learning from some of the, the best in the game in Yemen. So you've got um, Abdullah Barad, um, the head of the institute, is, is doing a lot of courses. You've got um, uh, Khaled Al Mahdi, a Reuters cameraman, a uh, photographer, uh, is doing a lot of courses. You have Arif Asulmi, who's one of the main um, interviewers on, on Yemen State TV. Um, and he is, is doing courses on, on you know, interviewing techniques. Uh, there's, there's even a course on, on, uh, on, on satirical journalism uh, from one of uh, Yemen's premier um, uh, satire writers. And, you know, the hope is now that, that with time, with the establishment of this, um, uh, the Institute, and obviously with other such institutes that do exist in Yemen, such as the Freedom Foundation, um, that skills will, you know, that, that more, more Yemeni journalists will have access to these skills, will have access to the equipment, be able to, to improve and better themselves as journalists, um, and hopefully we'll see an improvement, you know, in, in the Yemeni media in the future as a result uh, of this. Um, so yeah, sorry to, uh, sorry to draw on if that went from place to place. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's all for me, so if you have any questions, uh, more than welcome to talk about anything I've discussed or anything uh, else that's happened in Yemen that might have interested you over the last few weeks.